In this exercise, we're going to use photos of different soils and label those to train a classifier using a convolutional neural network. Now, one of the things to note is we have these different types here, gravel, sand, and silt. And just for defining where these cutoffs are, anything with a grain size over two millimeters that's going to be a gravel. And then sand is going to be between two millimeters all the way down to a sixteenth of a millimeter. And then less than a sixteenth of a millimeter, that is what we're going to classify as silt. So if you took some sieve trays uh, and had two of them, so this one would be a two millimeter mesh size. And then this one would be 1 16th millimeter. Then the silt would fall down below. We would have the sand in this one. And then gravel would stay here in the top tray. So and then those would pass down. You could calculate the fraction of each. Now some of these you'll see that it's kind of a mixture. There's some gravel mixed in with the silt. And we'll talk about how to address that with where the sample is not pure gravel, sand, or silt. We can maybe get a fraction of each. But let's use these convolutional neural networks. We're going to do this in TensorFlow. And uh, the very first thing that we'll need um, is to go ahead and uh, define our training directory. And I'll just call this train and then test. Okay, now we'll need some other modules that we're going to um, create with this. Okay, so we have some important Python modules. Uh, for example, we're going to import CV2, but that's not the name of the package if you don't have it. It's going to be OpenCV Python. Okay, so let's go ahead and just go through these. I'll just list these as we go through them. There's the operating system, OS. There's a regular expression, helps us do some string searching. CV2, that's OpenCV Python. If you don't have that one, when it imports, then you can issue this command right here in one of the cells, or just leave even leave off the exclamation mark if it's by itself. And that will install it. You'll just have to restart the kernel. We'll import time, and then also shell utility, zip file uh, here's a url lib request that will help us get a file uh, and download it the, in this case it's going to be able to download the images of the gravel sand and silt we'll have numpy as well python image library we'll also from os we'll just get a list directory we already imported os here but that just simplifies the syntax we'll also get is file and join and then we'll get a random range, matplotlib, okay, for plotting. And then we'll get on to TensorFlow. And you can also pip install TensorFlow. It includes Keras uh, with that. Okay, then we have TensorFlow Keras preprocessing. We're going to import image. And then also an image data generator. And uh, then the structure of our model. For the convolutional network, we're going to have a sequential. We'll have different layers, dense, activation, and flatten. And then we'll have a convolutional 2D and max pooling 2D as well. So quite a few packages that we're importing here. But these are all the ones that we need to uh, be able to copy in the images, unzip them, be able to work with the images. All right, so the data is going to be separated into a couple directories, such as our test directory and our train directory. We're going to have folders in there. And so this is going to assist us in labeling the images that we're going to use for classification, training, and also testing. So let's go just download the soil photos.zip. We're going to get that from the website. Okay, files is soil photos.zip. The URL is listed here. And I'll just add in the file to that. Okay, I'll use the URL lib, and I'll request that to retrieve that uh, from this URL. 
and then I'll get the file. Okay, I'll extract the archive and then remove. This is going to be soils, uh, soil photos.zip. Okay, with zip file, I'm going to read that as zip ref. Okay, I'll extract all the files there uh, to that directory, and then we're going to remove the zip file. All right, so let's go ahead and just do, we got to run this one first. I'll do control enter here. And also enter here to just define the directories. And then let's go ahead and run this. And then just take a look at what was created. So I'm just going to delete these for now and then run it again. And you can see it downloaded these. And here is our test directory. Okay, with the gravel, uh, we also have sand and we're also going to have silt okay so there are the there's the test directory there's similar ones for the training set as well now we want to import the data into python so it's located here on our desktop but now we want to grab um, okay and import it into this python session so let's go ahead and just initiate some of the data processing tools. This allows us to generate all of our data from the images. So we're going to rescale our pixels uh, are going to be the um, color values are going to be between 0 and 255. So I'm going to rescale that so they're all 0 to 1. And then we'll also do some things with the images like horizontal flip, true, zoom range, rotation range, shear range, height, shift range, and width shift range just so the orientation of my photo doesn't create a certain result so I'm going to rotate flip um, so that it is kind of scale invariant okay then I have a test data processor okay this is that was my training data processor it's going to be very similar to what I had with the um, the training data, except I don't need to do all of these flips and rotations. Okay, let's go ahead and just uh, load the data into Python. And I'm going to flow from directory. Okay, and this is going to be my training data directory. And there's my target size. So I'm going to try to get a 256 by 256 image, image for pixels. And I'll batch size is 32, uh, class mode categorical. And the same thing for my testing data. Okay, in this case, I don't need to shuffle, um, whereas on my training, I may need to shuffle. All right, now let's go on to model building. Okay, so I want to choose my model parameters, number of convolutional layers, dense layers, layer size, and number of training epochs, and then soil. So let's just talk a little bit about this. Uh, and what we're going for in terms of the, uh, the convolutional neural network and what that looks like. So I'll just show an example here from the course website. So if you come down to classification overview, you'll see something similar with numbers here. But we're just going to show how this is classified with a convolutional neural network. So let's say I had the number 3. Okay, you can see the different layers and how those are connected. So I'll have the different layers here, and you can see how it's dependent on the ones below it. Okay, and then so there's uh, so this first layer right here, this is the convolutional layer, you have some pooling, so you would reduce the image size space. Okay, here's another one, another convolutional, and this is a pooling layer. And this is our dense layer up here, followed by another dense layer. And then finally, we have the third, uh, the three that's predicted. You can see that's highlighted. Okay. Right here is the three. You can see the different um, you know, parts that are activated in this dense layer. Okay. As I visualize over this. So on the bottom is going to be our soil photo. And then it's going to pick out some features by using these convolutional uh, pieces 
and then pooling and convolutional piece pool dense dense and then our answer okay so let's build this now um, so here I'm going to have um, initiate my model I'll have a sequential model I'll begin adding properties to the model variable and so let's add a convolutional layer okay this is going to be a layer three uh, three okay so it's going to look for, for that many uh, around it okay input shape here's our 256 okay I'm going to use a rectified linear unit uh, and then I'll have a pooling okay this is just going to be a two by two pool and then I'll add another convolutional layers based on number of convolutional layers in this case I only had two so this one's going to have a loop and I'll just say you know, minus one because I've already done one of those and then these are the number of additional convolutional layers. I'll also have a rectified linear unit. And then I'll pool after that. Okay, and then we'll reduce the dimensionality. We'll flatten it. And then have fully dense layers. Okay, so number of dense layers, uh, that was just one. So unlike the number classification we saw, we're just going to have one dense layer. All right, and then we'll have our output layer. All right, and this is going to be dense and with three options. It's actually going to return a, a softmax probability. Okay, and we'll compile the sequential model with all of the properties. And we'll use the optimizer atom. We'll use accuracy for our metric. Okay, so let's use the data already loaded previously to train or to adjust the parameters of our model. So we'll fit. And there's the number of epochs, the number of uh, cycles it's going to go through to update the parameters. We'll have our validation data, which is the testing data, and that'll give us an indication about how it's doing. Okay, then we'll save the trained model. We'll save it as an H5 model. We'll see how big that is with these options that we have. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, run. Let's see, where am I on the running? I need to run this one. Okay, you can see the number turned right here I'll run uh, to load in these parameters and then let's uh, run this one okay so the very first one is going to train and you can see the loss function here the accuracy is about 30 percent so it's like it's guessing I had three options um, you know 33 percent would be if it's just guessing the value accuracy again 33 percent so it didn't do very well this first uh, step Okay, but you can see it's starting to get higher on the value accuracy. Okay, that got up to 80%, 66. Okay, it's cycling back and forth through. Hopefully these, the accuracy on the training set is increasing. Um, and then on our validation, that's on our test set. Okay, so that's the accuracy. And uh, so right here, it's just above 50%. So not incredibly good. It did much better on the training set. Okay, 85 to 90% right here at the end. But you can see that the validation stayed right around 53%. So we may need more photos. We only had a limited number that we trained on. So now it's been trained. Let's go ahead and just retrieve that. Okay, so we're going to make a prediction we're going to load that in with OpenCV the image read one of the differences between OpenCV and uh, matplotlib or even the python image library the pill uh, is that they swap the rgb uh, values so you just have to swap those back just uh, swap the first and the last for each of the colors all right and then we'll load uh, the image uh, we'll go image to array so now we're just processing this uh, manually before we use the flow uh, from directory but here we're just uh, loading it in and uh, showing how we get this into the pixels we'll scale the image okay and then we'll expand the dimensions so it's like flattening it and then we'll have our class is going to be gravel sand or silt and then we'll come up with the prediction. We'll go model, uh, model.predict. And we'll just take the maximum. 
okay? The maximum one of all of those probabilities is takes the header value uh, for for each one that's, uh, you know, the maximum one is going to take, you know, if it says it's 60% silt, you know, 20% gravel, 20% sand, it's going to take uh, the first one, that's 60%. Okay, so uh, we're going to have the true value. I'm just going to search for, in, in the regular expression, I'm going to search in that path uh, to see, um, you know, if it, there's gravel or sand or silt in the path name. And that's how I'll get the, the correct answer. And then we'll have the predicted type, the true type, and if it's correct. So we'll print that out and then return out. Okay, so there's our function to make a prediction. For a single image. Now let's go ahead and just do test image file path. We're just going to test sand and zero.jpg. That's going to be our very first one and we'll show that. Uh, we'll make the prediction. So we'll run this one first and then this one. So it predicted that this was sand and the true type was sand and so the correct is true. All right, but let's say there's kind of this mixture. As we talked about before, over here we had uh, this uh, kind of gravel with the silt. So let's take the percentage photo, um, and let's just look at this. We'll, we'll look at this one and see. Okay, I'm just going to load it in. If I leave out this part of it, then it's going to look kind of blue. Okay, um, so if I just look at it, okay, so you got to swap those two, so the red and the blue are swapped, and then it shows correctly. Because I read it in with OpenCV, but matplotlib is a little bit different in how it displays those. So you can see here there's some gravel there. And, um, you know, maybe we want to classify a percentage of gravel instead of, uh, you know, and silt instead of just this is silt or this is gravel. So let's just, um, okay, we're going to split the images. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to uh, look inside our directory. And let me just run through this. We have an image. Um, and the strategy here is just divide it up into tiles. Okay, so let's say we have a larger image. We're going to divide this up into tiles and then we'll do an identification on each of these and then when we do that we'll then take a fraction so let's say this one classified as gravel and this one as sand and that one is sand and that one is gravel so we take the fraction of each divided by the total number of tiles and then that would be the fraction of the soil so that's one way to do it. There are many others as well. We could even look at the probabilities that come out of it and, and uh, normalize by the probabilities of the classifier. So there are many different ways uh, to do this. So we have our image directory and then our save directory. So let's go ahead and first of all just split these up into those individual tiles. So we'll have our classification list is gravel, sand, or silt. And then for classification, this classification list we're going to uh, go into that folder. And then here's going to be a new folder. Okay, we're going to have save directory uh, with this classification. And then we will um, have our files. Okay, for f for f in list directory. If is file. Okay, so we're only going to look at the files in that folder. Okay, then go through the different files. All right, uh, and if it's INI in the file name, we're just going to skip it. Uh, so sometimes in Windows or other operating systems, they have desktop.ini for like the thumbnails or something. So just ignore that one. Okay, we're going to read in the file. If it's an image file, we'll look at the height, width, and then color. Okay, that we need just the height and the width. The image dimension is going to be uh, 64. Okay, so we're going to crop the images. Um, all right, and 
here we go. We're going to go through uh, these dimensions. Okay, image dimension. We're going to look at uh, six segments of 64. Okay, and I'm going to go through this um, one block at a time, looking at these different tiles. All right, and then I'm going to uh, look at the cropped shape. Okay, and then uh, this is a cropped height and the cropped width. Okay, and then I'll uh, go into my uh, save folder. I'm going to put a random number in there just so I don't have any file duplicates. And I'll write that tiled image. So I'm just going to take just this fraction, this, this tile of this image, okay, and I'm going to generate a, a new one. Else I'll pass. Okay, so that's splitting the images. And then I'm going to now uh, replace the training data directory. I'll replace train with uh, nothing just to get the parent directory. So I had uh, the training data directory, but I want to get back to the root of that. Okay, and then we'll go to training divided and test divided. So we're going to create two new folders here that are going to, okay, so let's go ahead and just see those as it's created. Um, we'll have gravel, sand, and silt. And then I'm just going to go through this a little bit quickly. It's just going to basically make these directories with all these tiles. Okay, so we're going to split the training images. Okay, and it's going to make uh, train divided and test divided. So we're going to train on those instead. And then if file doesn't exist, then we'll pass. Uh, does not exist, then we'll pass. Okay, so let's go ahead and create these. Okay, so let's just look at our test divided. Here's our gravel. And we can see here we just have these little segments that we're going to be picking out. Okay, so it divided up that image into many of them. And uh, we are just going to um, train or test on these. Okay, um, now we're going to load the model. Okay, so the model will get the current working directory. We'll load in this H5 file that we had saved before. So let's just take a look at the properties here. It's 45 megabytes. So from when it trained before, uh, it generated this with 45 uh, megabytes of, uh, you know, those are all the parameters of the convolutional network that we're just going to load back in. Okay, so let's print that model path, and then we'll load the model with that model file path. All right, let's classify these new tiles now. So we're going to classify the images, and this is going to be gravel, sand, or silt. And we're going to just keep track of how many there are of each. Okay, I'll read in the image. We'll just go ahead and resize it to 1024 by 1024. You know, we wouldn't normally want to do this, but I just didn't want to have to throw a bunch of big images in that file download for you. So I'm just resizing it. Okay, we'll just uh, stick with 256 here. We're going to go through this range and pick out, um, you know, these different um, dimensions. Okay, I'm going to go 256 on this one. I know I showed before, uh, you know, just uh, lower blocks. I believe this one was 64 by 64 here, but I'm going to step it up to 256. Okay. Um, okay, then we're just going to count each one and then we'll classify okay the percentage okay so it went really fast through that but basically it's just uh, taking each of these tiles classifying each one keeping track of the total count and then the proportion is what we're going to be returning of gravel sand or silt and so it's going to go through this just like we had, had done before. It's going to predict on each of those tiles and then add it to the first class, that it, the highest probability that it got from the classifier. 
Okay, and then we'll have our classify percentage. I'll just run this. It's not going to return anything because they're just functions. Okay, so now we're going to do classify percentage. And so let's have this run. Uh, it said percent gravel, 87.5, and percent silt is 12.5. And the time to classify was about uh, less than a second to do all of this. So it's able to do that fairly quickly. You can see it's kind of a mixture of the gravel and the silt. Uh, but the classification doesn't really match the photo. So you know maybe there's some other things we can do to better uh, differentiate the fraction. You know Maybe use the softmax output, the probabilities, instead of just looking at an individual tile. All right, so what I want to do now is just uh, show you one other thing with this. Uh, you know, this is just one approach, but we could also use another approach uh, that's here for texture classification. So this is a texture classifier. You can use other approaches like a local binary pattern. Okay, it's very similar to what we see with the convolutional network, but it has a little bit more structure around this. Analyzing the local pixels around a point, it's a very effective for texture classification. So for example, for soils, we might be able to just look at textures to get um, you know, what they are. So here's uh, edge, flat, corner, um, and we can set different thresholds. So we're gonna train and test a classifier on sand, seed, and stone, similar to the gravel sand or silt all right and uh, here's just some code uh, with if you'd like to take a look at it uh, also has it here where we use a support vector machine to do the classification and the local binary pattern becomes the features of our support vector machine to do the classification so this one's a little bit faster okay but maybe it's less Flexible, it just requires you to do it based on textures versus other qualities that might be in there, like in the gravel, those might be too big to really have a texture. Okay, so that's just a little bit on the texture classification. If you want to go back here to the soil classification, it has all the code. You can also click here on the Jupyter Notebook. If you don't have Python installed, you can just run all of this in Colab. All right, I'm going to come back here. Uh, you know, there's some additional information uh, that you can go through and also some references as well. So, for example, this one, construction material classification on imbalanced data sets for construction monitoring automation. Uh, this one's a good article. It gives a little bit of a review on uh, this type of you know, materials. It's more than just the soil, but it is still very relevant and it gives a lot of information on uh, material classification. Also, take a look at the bit and crack classification. This one uh, shows a little bit more about convolutional neural networks for drilling bits, and then also an additional one on detecting cracks. So, cracks here, no cracks here. Can we build a classifier that can detect cracks in concrete? All right, and then also this. Uh, texture classification. Also, thanks to Peter for generating this case study.